Greetings my friends and welcome to a brand new nation's guide and this time my friends we have a request for Poland and thus here we are my friends we're going to have a look at Poland now in some detail and we're going to have a look at the strategic and tactical sort of situation that Poland uh, finds itself in at the start we're going to look at the units we have available just a, a brief sort of side note to that any of the units you see that aren't a standard vanilla sort of Darth mod they are because I have installed the AUM mod with the additional units mod which sort of does really does increase the roster of troops quite significantly and you really can get some absolutely fabulous fabulous sort of elite troops with that um, mod so I would definitely recommend it <coughs> there will be a link in the description how you can get that it is fully compatible with Darth mod so you can pretty much just over you can just pretty, pretty much put that mod on top of Darth mod and they will both work absolutely fine with each other fully compatible a wonderful mod I recommend it wholeheartedly I really do we'll also be looking at trade possibilities we'll be looking at our finan the financial situation of Poland as well we'll also be looking at where you can attack who your enemies are going to be who your friends and allies are going to be where you can attack the, the situations you might find yourself in so we'll look a bit of in-depth look here at real Poland my friends the next time will be Genoa we have a request for Genoa to be looked at for the next nation's guide so of course anybody else likes to have a nation guide that is, hasn't already been done um, please of course let me know in the comments and I will do my utmost to try and get those out to you as quickly as I possibly can so let's have a look at Poland here we start off here as you can see my friends friends with a good amount of land already at our disposal here. We've got Gdansk here in West Prussia, we have Warsaw in Poland here, we have Galicia and Podolia, we have Minsk and Vilnia. So we've got five, already five regions in our, under, under Polish control here. As you can see, sort of the glaring, sort of obvious, sort of elephant in the room as it were here, is that Konigsberg here from the Prussians is sort of this sort of dare I say almost like a bridgehead here for the Prussians within what would be ideally Prussian territory, uh, Polish territory. This is ideally what really should be under the Polish sphere of influence and it, look at that it is absolute huge huge production center here the massive city here already got fortifications around it so you can already tell here the significance of this city of Konigsberg is massive not only to yourselves but more importantly to the Prussians now of course it is easily it can be easily drawn into this Prussian sort of um, area here in the Konigsberg and rightly so because if you were to take this it has a number of sort of you know very very powerful and potent dare I say outcomes for you but we'll have a look at that a little bit closer so let's have a look what you've actually got let's have a look at the regions you've got actually in some depth here so let's start here with Gdansk which is West Prussia of course the sort of the sister to East Prussia here and you start off here with Gdansk uh, a, a very good infrastructure already here running through as you can see the roads have already got trade route moving through them that is excellent to see now you do start here with a peasant farm which is going to be bringing in for you 150 to the regional wealth but little else, as you can see here, this is a pretty desolate in terms of economy and infrastructure, a pretty desolate region here. West Prussia really does need East Prussia to really function properly. So that is really what you're looking at here. Because East Prussia, and of course you do have here, of course, the Crafts Workshop as well, which is going to be bringing in 375. But ideally what you really need is the combined strength of these two regions here that really does stare us fully in the face here the reality of that is you need both East and Prussia to combine it as a Prussian whole here to bring that real strength to bear because you can see you've already got a coaching in here as well you've also got another craft workshop here which is going to gain 525 to regional wealth and of course you've also got the possibility here to upgrade here to a new farm as well and of course, last but not least, we've got the massive production facilities or the potential for massive production facilities here from <coughs> the capital of here of Konigsberg. So again, if you were to combine these two together, which is tempting, I know, at the very start, then you really will have a powerhouse at your disposal. You really, really will. Then moving down south here, we have Warsaw, Poland, the capital of the Polish Empire. It is the absolute beating heart here of everything that you are striving for. This is the region, this is the land that you must use to its full potential because it will give you a huge amount back if you do that. And as you can see here, we already have a, a, a decent amount here. We already have a craft workshop here as well, bringing in 450 and also an additional plus 7 to the town wealth in the region. We also have, more importantly, a school here, vital to the research and development here that you are, of 
you're going to have to really put into high gear here to really sort of push forward your military and indeed your economic and civil sort of um, assets. Then you have here another farm, peasant farmland again, 200 to tap regional wealth, which is not too bad at all there actually for that. And again, the infrastructure here is looking not too bad. I've got a lot of roads moving out to different locations here. Again, excellent to see. And infrastructure plays an important part of what you can do here. So before we actually go any further, let's have a look at the infrastructure here of West Prussia. Um, again, you've got basic roads. Cobble roads will add an additional four to town wealth, and of course improve your map movement speed, which is vital for not only trade, but also for the military. And indeed, the same here in Warsaw here as well. Again, you've got cobble roads, but if you upgrade <coughs> this infrastructure here, it will of course increase trade and also increase movement of troops. Now, for me, infrastructure is one of the absolute basic, but also the one of the most key decisions you will make. The quicker you get your infrastructure, uh, inf infrastructure up and running, the better it will be for you in the long term. So it is a what was some would consider quite an expensive um, sort of expenditure to be putting out very f the very first because you don't have much money. But in the long run, the infrastructure will pay dividends. Believe me, my friends, it is really important that that, div that infrastructure is put down as quickly as possible. Get those roads running at maximum capacity as soon as possible and it will pay you back in spades later down it really will not only in gold but in terms of being able to shift your your military on you know on axes on a six month so in other words if you get attacked from different bit different locations within your region your troops can move through those roads much much quicker get to the point of of conflict much much quicker that will pay a, a, a be honestly a huge dividend to you in the end then we come down, of course, further south here again into Galicia Podolia. <coughs> now, this does have a, a very, very significant sort of um, position within the empire. And not only that, it is where you're going to start meeting, sort of really bumping into, really started bumping to some of the powerhouses of this campaign here. So let's start what we have here, right here in the north of sort of um, Galicia here. Of course you start off here with a craft workshop, 600 to regional wealth, absolutely fantastic and kills. If you upgrade it to two here you get 900. So it really is already being paying dividends. Then you have here, which you don't see very much here, in the sort of the west or east I would say, unless you go into Scandinavia, you don't see many logging camps here at all. So the logging camp is bringing 500 already. And the reason you've got the logging camp is because look at the vast forested area here on the mountains here. Absolutely rich with um, timber, which you're going to use here. But if you upgrade it even there, 600, look at that, to the, ta to the regional wealth. Absolutely fantastic for there. And again, then you've got a peasant farmland, which is going to bring in 200 of the regional wealth. You've also got a fort here, Fort Brezani here. Look at that, what a fabulous, fabulous location that is here. Because it effectively almost encompasses the entire stretch here of this region. So if anything was going to come in from this direction here, sort of from the east, dare I say, then you would indeed have to engage this force within the fort first, giving you time to s arrange your defences here in Galatia and Podolia. So that really is an important. You've also got the possibility of here of villages being sort of, you know, put into into production once they have emerged as full villages and full towns. And here you have the capsule here, as you can see, and again, once again, getting those copper roads up, getting that infrastructure, because not only is it important the, the sort of the capital, the main heartland of the region is, is upgraded fully, but it's also that the outlying regions are, because you want to maybe be able to shift troops from the homeland from Warsaw into these other outer regions, the outer or extremities of your empire, as quickly as you possibly can to support them. That's where the infrastructure comes in. It really, really is important here. And then, of course, we move up here, <coughs> Moving up then from, from south to north, we have Minsk here, which you know really is a massive, massive region. Look at that, it's absolutely huge here. And here we have, of course, a peasant farm. Again, 175, not a huge amount coming in from here. But then you have here another craft workshop, 375, plus 7 to the regional wealth. Then, of course, we have here a uh, another peasant farmland here. Again, 150 to the regional wealth, not massive either. But we've got Minsk, but Minsk don't be fooled here. Minsk again getting the infrastructure will be very important because all of these roads sort of link back down to sort of Warsaw. Minsk holds a very, very vital strategic position here within sort of the Polish campaign because of whom it borders. It borders not only Russia, 
it also borders here Sweden as well so I mean you really can look at what it borders and region that borders um, uh, Sweden here as well but the main thing is it borders Russia it is your main sort of region that really does but but heads here with Russia and it's vital therefore that this region is held quite significantly by some very powerful military forces here but we shall look at that again in greater depth in a moment and then up here we have Vilnius here Lithuania and again an exceptionally economic rich region here it really really is one of the most powerful you've got in terms of economy even even usurping here Warsaw which is saying something indeed now as you can see you start off with a sort of kind of coaching in here which is going to be excellent here for Eastern European infantry mercenaries and guerrilla mercenaries but plus two happiness the middle classes and also spawning your spies or rakes here minute plus one that's going to be absolutely fantastic then of course here you have a craft workshop plus 275 you have of course the peasant farmland plus 125 look how far it stretches right into the Moscow region indeed not too far away from Moscow itself the sort of this bulge here this almost this finger th almost like a, th a thumbprint here pokes right into Lavat here the Lavat farmland uh, not too far away only a few hundred kilometers away is Moscow itself so it's a pretty important region you know tactically it also briefly bumps into Estonia here which is under Swedish control and also it courts along here in the Courland Straits here as well it's called a very thin sort of almost like a thin finger uh, strip of land here for Courland so you, it does have a, a very very important strategic position as well um, within the grand scheme of things of course you've got pe pheasant peasant farms here as well you've got another peasant farm here as well you've got a, the ability of another craft workshop here which you've already covered so you've got you know a decent amount coming in three f beg your pardon that is of course um, the call and farmland my mistake over ex over egging the pudding here a little bit but also get another fort here as well now the fort isn't really brilliantly s positioned in terms of for a call and or for Sweden but keeping the Prussians hemmed in it is excellent here look at that already you can sort here this fort pa uh, Panamune here is absolutely looking a fantastic position because they can't really the Prussians couldn't really cross the border here into this region through this particular border here without confronting the fort first so again that is that sort of brief outline of what you have available to you now let's have a look we already skirted on here but let's have a look at what is actually around you let's have a look at whom your potential enemies are potential allies are which are, which are the major nations around you so of course the first thing to notice here we've got Prussia on our doorstep here as well the Connings but we already covered that briefly here they have this great monolith here of a city an absolute behemoth of a city here and that really is something to consider very very early on then of course you have here again bordering us here in Poland and in Gdansk is Austria now Austria already is quite a sizable nation quite a nice sizable empire stretching all the way down into the Yugoslavia and then all the way up into here into Prague with Vienna being the heartland here um, then you also we also briefly touch on sort of the Ottoman Empire we're at peace with the Ottomans and also here as well we've got sort of Transylvania on the doorstep as well but Ottomans here just in uh, Moldo Moldavia here as well we've also co we've covered this with the Russians here briefly coming into Ukraine and also here in the Moscow region we've also got here on this sort of thin border here between Estonia and Lithuania and we've got Courland so again you've got a good amount of potential enemies but also potential allies to consider there so very very important that we look at that as well and later we'll be looking at which one we ally which will be your sort of uh, your enemies in the future so let's have a quick look what we can actually do with the cities here let's really start off with here king we've got the barracks we've got a government council in warsaw now pretty high up already the government council uh, conservatorium Again, we don't have admiralty we've got no ordinance we've the ordinance factory here of course can be but we've got a cannon foundry but of course and then there's also the settlement fortifications and you've also got here in Gdansk again you've got the ability to move to the governor's residence um, I assume the same here as well in Gdolia and Galicia yes indeed governor's residence possibly the same here as well in Minsk but here in Vilnius is another sort of city or the potential to be quite a major city here indeed <coughs> but you don't have any any sort of military buildings here at all it means you've got to start building an army encampment highly unusual especially considering the number of nations you're sort of touching here with your border that is going to be a crucial factor get the army encampment up as soon as you possibly can because you're going to need those forces into production 
very quick, quick. Same for the Cannon Foundry. Pretty cheap at 750 gold. Government Council, again, if you want to really stamp your authority on the region and get that tax bonus up and running, and also the repression in the region. Research of military te technologies is increased to three for the points. Uh, increases your training capacity as well, and also you're able to recruit militia as well from here. Then you've got uh, obviously the ability to have a opera house, but again, that's quite expensive to start with. A, an opera house, I don't think, is the most um, crucial of buildings needed here. So, as we can see here, Vilnius and Warsaw are going to be your major production centres. The other three regions are going to be sort of small regions where you're going to have to start filtering forces to them to sort of help these regions sustain themselves militarily but also you're going to have to get the infrastructure up particularly in Vilnius and Warsaw these were the, re the, na the regions I would focus on putting the infrastructure in first because they are the regions that are going to bring the most wealth to you so it really is important to get infrastructure in Warsaw first then Vilnius and then it is up to you where you think you really need to put the infrastructure s uh, next for these outer regions personally if it was me I would do Warsaw, Vilnius, I would do Gdansk Minsk and then Galatian Pandolia. But again, that is going to tie up to you, my friends, how you want to wish to play the sort of this campaign, how you want this campaign to unfold. Now, let's have a look at our money. Now, you start off with 6,000 gold, not a huge amount. There are many nations out there with seven and a half, eight, some even 10,000 gold they start off with, which is an excellent amount. It really, really is. That's a superb amount of gold. But if, unfortunately, with 6,000, you're going to be sort of limited in what you can do initially. So you have to really funnel your, your resources into put into sort of very small, um, compact sort of um uh, amounts where you can put them to the best use. So let's have a look what we've got here in terms of national summary here. So we've got tax income of just under 2,000, got trade income of 2,000, we've got other 3150 sort of diplo diplomatic sort of uh, agreements, things like that have already coming in. So we've got 7191 coming in here as your income. Our expenditure is 2930 on the army, no navy, and of course the only sort of the only part of sort of the land we have under our control that sort of even you know is on the sea or near a uh, seafront here is Gdansk here as the only potential for building a port or having any access to trade lines here is Gdansk you know as, as we can increase that into, into if we can take Konigsberg of course then you would have two regions that would give you access to the Baltic Sea which is again going to be crucial for trade in the future so we've got 293 over the outgoings 4261 that is an excellent amount of income to start with it really is nitty four and a half thousand coming in is pretty it's pretty remarkable to be honest with you when you're starting out so early on um, not many re not many nations get this much income especially here but this other here is what's really boosting it Tra tax income is going to be low until you can bring down the tax to start growth but we'll look at that in, in the future now policies here so again we've got 993 cut income from the nobility which is they're b effectively paying for the wealth and then you've got the um, middle classes which is the population growth now be only because of the council's advice was I did I, did I really consider well I was sort of you know advised wonderfully that reducing your tax levels for both classes will help no end because if you reduce it for the for the nobility it increases wealth over time so even though your tax income takes a hit in the short term in the long term it increases wealth because the wealth the nobility is more wealthy so their money sort of trickles down into the sort of the into the other classes it would trickles down that, that trickle down effect of wealth where it sort of you know it, it moves down through the classes and eventually everybody becomes wealthy because the rich are very very wealthy and then you have the middle classes who are the sort of the population where the you know the wealthier they are the happier they are the more um, population growth increases because of their sort of <coughs> you know because of the the population is happy with their lot in life as it were so even though you're thinking putting tax levels up is going to give you a massive bonus all it will do is it will put everybody's back up against you and it will really lower the wealth um, generation over time if you lower it you increase your wealth and your population growth over time it takes a long time to, for that to really kick into the positive when you reduce your tax levels but over time this will pay dividends to you. it really will it'll pay in itself you lower the tax levels even this early on you will see growth in all your cities and that's what you want you want growth both economic wise and population wise because that's going to really build your empire into a quite a powerful force very early on so we can probably consider doing that even though if we just notice we knock this down here 
our tax goes from 1009 to 1304 and as you can see here this always brings down that but growth in the nation in the regions here has already gone up it's already up by here to 2.5 million and also growth is going up here in Warsaw same in Gdansk the same in Vilnius the same here in Minsk and the same here as well in Galicia. So already the growth, the wealth income is starting to go up already now, even though we've taken this hit here, we've got three and a half thousand instead of four and a half thousand. Personally, I think it's worth the hit here. Lower your tax levels, get that growth going as quickly as you can. Eventually growth will be absolutely rampant, it really will. And that'll give you a much more power in terms of population growth, but also in terms of wealth. The more populous you've got, the more people who are working, the more money you're gonna make and also the, the wealthier you are, the more that everybody's going to share in that wealth as it trickles down from the top. Then if you look at the ministers, vital ministers here, only 42% here, constitutional monarchy, so in other words you have an elections. But as you can see here, the monarch is, n is okay, but your ministers are not good at all. You've got here the head, which gives you no bonus at all. You've got, I mean, this treasury, this uh, Lubomirski here, Treasury Minister, is an absolutely appalling minister. Minus four bo to bonus to global tax, here, minus fifteen to growth trade, and minus eight to town wealth. You definitely, definitely want to remove this gentleman as quickly as possible. Can you can kick the appointee, and whatever comes in his place is going to be better than this gentleman. He is an atrocious Treasury Minister. Then you've got here the Justice Minister, who is an excellent Justice Minister, bringing down or increasing repression, bringing down the town to the. Uh, cost of the town watch and also maximum repression bonus army again not a brilliant minister you get no bonuses whatsoever and the navy i mean look at that for the navy what a terrible minister of the navy so you have three things to do initially when you first start get rid of your treasury minister and bring someone else in you because anybody apart from this gentleman is going to be better than that even if you don't get any bonuses at all at least you're not losing money because of your, your minister then I would go for the army, and then I would go for the navy. The navy's not really important because we don't have a navy yet. But treasury, then army, then navy for definite, my friends. Get those in. Because look at look at some of these gentlemen. Look at this. Frugal and, thrif and thrifty. Morally impaired. Even some of these gentlemen would be better, even if they have some minuses in some of this trade. So look at the status quo. Stall holder. So again, this gentleman would be absolutely wonderful in treasury. <coughs> And again, honest and pious, so even he would be better in the ministry. You've got some really fantastic opposition ministers here. Industrial revolutionary, patron, status quo. So, I mean, absolutely wonderful, wonderful sort of opposition um, ministers, as it were, who hopefully will take over these posts if you decide to kick them out here. Because it needs to be done, it really does. Then trade. You've got trade with Prussia. You've got trade with Russia, and you've got trade with Corland. Now, having trade with Russia and Prussia is actually good for you because it you already know you're on a, a sound diplomatic footing with those. Corland as well, which is important, but again, Corland could potentially be a target for the future. It really, really could. But you're allied with Corland, you've got peace with Prussia, and you've also got allied with Russia. Now, you're allied with Russia, which means that straight away, diplomatically, you are secured on this flank. The flank, your flank here, your sort of eastern flank here is covered already by Russia because you're allied with them. You've got a very, very strong ally. You've got a good trade agree agree agreement with them. Strong trade, as you can see here. 2000, 2013 here for Russia, 771 for Poland. As your infrastructure increases, so will your costs here, uh, your income. You're allied with Poland as well, which has given you this buffer state here between yourselves and Riga here in, uh, for Sweden. Now, if I'm not mistaken, is Russia at war with, no they're not, they're at war with the Ottoman Empire, <coughs> they're allied with themselves and also Denmark, out with the only trade partner they've got as well, which is fantastic, Crimean Khanate, uh, they're my Barbary states and of course the pirates, but as you can see Russia is a very very strong force here to have at your back, so that's a wonderful site already, now can you actually, and of course you've got Sweden as well, now Sweden are hostile, now that's what you have to watch out for. Sweden are hostiles. There's the chance. Let's have a look at Courland. Courland are not war, not war with anyone, but they are. We are, are we? But they're protectorates of ours. That's why. So Courland is our protectorate. But it does provide a buffer zone here as well. Now you could, because Sweden is hostile with us, and there's a very, very strong chance they might declare war upon us. That you could actually use a force here to to sort of move into Courland here, Jelgava here, and sort of help any f attack here that was launched by the 
by the Swedish across the Courland here, or even to move a force into these forests, this forest area here, uh, military force into here, and sort of almost ambush any Swedes coming through past from St. Petersburg. Remember, they'd have to come all the way around here and strike from Estonia here in this direction. So you put a force here, you would block any attempt for the, the Swedish to come through here, but also you've got Russia as well moving in, hopefully. What is the... partners of Britain and France but they don't have any allies which is good so Sweden could potentially be a target as well if you were to move through and take Riga or even go for St. Petersburg itself that would be a huge coup de grace it really really would but you've already got very strong ally allies here on your eastern flanks and also sort of in the north up here you've also got peace here with Austria but what's your conditions here with Austria? Let's have a look. Indifferent, but you can get trade with them. You can also get trade with the Ottoman Empire, even though they're unfriendly with us. As you can see, they also border our our Galicia Podolia holdings here. So again, putting army on this border here would not be a bad thing. It's, but the chances are that Russia are going to probably move in against Ottomans very, very quickly anyway. But if you can establish trade with Austria you would then have this sort of triumvirate here of, of nations where they're bringing all trade in from all sides um, and you might even be able to get trade with the Ottomans if if they allow that. Sweden is hostile so you could try and get trade with Austria because they're indifferent so in other words they'd they, they, they probably be very positive towards that trade. You could even, and if the trade routes are available you could probably get Ottomans as well which would increase their standing with you to probably um, friendly or indifferent um, so again, that's what you want to look at for trade as well. Use what you have available to you. Keep an eye on what your diplomatic status is because it's important that you use what's available to you. But try and get as much trade from your neighbours as you possibly can because trade is going to help you increase your military, your infrastructure, which is really, really important. Um, and of course, we're going to have a look now at the uh, units you can get here as you upgrade your buildings here. So, of course, we've already got army encampment, we've already got barracks. So, But as you can see from barracks, you can already get... Line Infantry, Regiment of Horse, and Ulands. Now, Ulands coming this quickly is very, very positive. Ulands, look at that charge bonus. Absolutely wonderful to see. It really, really is a fantastic charge bonus. But let's have a look what you get when you get Drill School. Now, if you get Drill School, of course, your, your school here is going to prove vital here. The Krakow School. So you move down into, s into military syllabus for your uh, research. Drill School, oh, 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 look at this. It really is fantastic. Show you where you get Grenadiers. You get expatriate infantry, Ulans, regiment of horse, blunderbuss shotgunners, wonderful, hussars as well, which is fantastic. Those with rings around them, which means you need, um, you can get the troops from drill schools, but you need to research a particular sort of a requirement to get them. So if they've got a red circle around them, you need to research a particular requirement to be able to get them. So for, you know, for fusiliers, you need fire by rank. For line infantry guards, you need m new model build, a uh, new model bayonet drill need wedge formation for uh, Lancer guards so as you can see you, you know and also for Grendia guards you need new model bayonet drill um, which is which is here so you need to get this but you've got to go through one two three four lots of research before you can get to that <coughs> so you're going to be a while before you can get these but the drill school does allow you to sort of recruit these if need be then we'll move down to military academy we should open up some more here oh my good sharpshooters you've got of course light cavalry sharpshooters as well expatriates oh look at that Grenzers Oh, look at that. They are fantastic. Wonderful skirmishers. Absolutely fantastic there. Um, and you're also able to get buccaneers as well. Uh, you've got line infantry. You've got hussars. Um, you're also to get a sepoys, company, uh, infantry, um, grenadiers, African native infantry. Oh, mountain troops, which again are excellent. Really, really good skirmishers as well. Light, uh, light uh, infantry. Then you've got colonial line infantry. Highlander Warband. <clears throat> oh my goodness me, you jest with me, surely, sir. National Cavalry. Whoa. Mounted troops, exceptionally shot cavalry. 26 of the charge bone. Look at the recruitment cost, 1,000. That's because you've got that terrible army general there at the moment. Um, look at that. That is a wonderful National Cavalry. They are absolutely fantastic. Uh, then you've got, of course, Curisees. Oh, look at that. Polish Pan... Pansoni Cavalry. My word, that is exceptional. Look at their defence bonus, 23. Wow. And also General's Bodyguards, Regiment of Horse. But those three regiments here, these three regiments are going to be proved 
wonderful than any army you use. They really will. So that's what Military Academy gives you. Remember, these are also using the additional units mod as well. Then you've got Army Board. So Army Board is going to give you the extra chevrons here as well as experienced chevrons. Look at that. If you get Diamond Formation, you get the Royal Polish Crusade Guards. That is wonderful. My word, what that? The Royal Polish Crusade Guards. That is a fantastic. Oh, the Winged Hussars, my favourite. My favourite um, Polish cavalry. The Winged Hussars. They in sight, they are absolutely incredible. When you see these gentlemen charging at you, look at that. 25 charge bonus, 22 defence. The melee, melee attack is 16. These are brutal in combat. If they hit you, you're going to buckle. Believe me, and they are wonderful in, in battle. They really, really are. Everything else you can get pretty much standard Crusades, of course. Rifleman Scouts Breach Loading, Household Cavalry. Um, oh my goodness me, you've got so many selections here as soon as you research them. <coughs> African Infantry Guards, Mountain Troops. And then, of course, last but by no means least, Army Staff College, the pinnacle of military training here. So, again, you've got Guards, Polish um, Panzerni Cavalry, which with the Chevron, same with the Hussars. Um, expatriate and you've got national cavalry with the chevron as well household cavalry winged hussars oh royal cairo as well excellent oh guard grenadiers fantastic regiment to have it really really is and republican guard grenadiers you've got some wonderful choice of troops here. you really really do but the cavalry for the polish is exceptional it really really is and that my friends is what we get here for the polish military um, of course, moving where you want to be. But personally, I would put a lot into military until you least to get a drill school. So I would put all I would I would invest in uh, ring bayonets and military syllabus before I did anything else to get open drill school because it really does open up a, a, a huge diversity then of um, of additional troops for you, especially the elite troops. <coughs> then I would move into agriculture to get the farms up because you've got a lot of farms. Uh, metal industry as well is going to prove definitely vital here. But of course, you need to upgrade the craft workshop to an iron workshop to unlock these and then also I would then move into f to physocracy here to open up the sort of additional trade income bonuses etc um, and as in terms of where you want to attack who you want to attack the most obvious region is either Prussia for Konigsberg here but maybe you're at peace with them but there's a chance they might turn on you very very quickly because you've obviously got good dance we got West Prussia so they might want their entire region back so keep an eye on that there's obviously Austria, but personally with me, I would try and get some kind of alliance or trade agreement with, uh, with Austria to sort of keep them um, happy until you can strike against them. But if it was me, and I was going to focus at one point, it would definitely be the Ottomans. The Ottomans are the weak link here, because you've got Russia against them, and also you've got an ally alliance with Russia. So the chances is, if you attack Ottomans... Russia is oh they're standing with Russia is going to increase but you'll also have Russia at your back you know Russia protecting your back if you're going against the Ottomans so you could quickly move in and tra take most of um, this sort of northern air flank of theirs this northern front of the Ottomans and push down into sort of Yugoslavia as we're into Bulgaria Serbia Bosnia Croatia really strike hard here and take all of this for yourselves and if you were to take this if you were to move into Bosnia look where it puts you you've almost got this sort of hook here this hook here, this sort of um, almost like a you could pincer move into Austria if necessary from Warsaw, from Gdansk, and also from Bosnia, from Belgrade, and push inward, sort of crush in this sort of almost can form a bulge here that would destroy all of sort of um, Austria. Or you could just move in and take Konigsberg as quickly as possible and then defend Gdansk and defend Warsaw against any counterattacks. But to be honest with you, the chances are that. The Prussians are going to be at war with the Austrians pretty quickly, so that will take that away from you. If they if they drawn into a war, you could strike against the Prussians here in, in Kadansk, uh, in Konigsberg, I beg your pardon, and bring all of Prussia under your control, and that would give you a mighty, mighty boost to your income, and also to your military capacity because of the strength here of this production centre. Um, but pretty much. In terms of uh, who you attack and who your ally is going to be, keep it local. Keep it to the Europe, this sort of Central Europe, Eastern Europe belt. M trying to move elsewhere, you could even move up into sw sort of Sweden here because they are they are at war with you or hostile towards you. You could even move out from Gdansk here eventually and move into Stockholm. But you don't have any uh, any ports to be able to do that. Yeah, you have no ports. Um, this Gdynia port here isn't even available, and even Gdansk, uh, Konigsberg here doesn't have a port either. But 
eventually who knows once you've got these ports secured here you might be able to move in to Sweden but ideally keep it local to what it is personally if it was me I'd be the Ottomans for definite I'd hit the Ottomans um, and if you see the Russians moving against the Ottomans then of course you could probably move in to help them or take um, Konigsberg for yourself and reunite Prussia but my friends I'm going to end this episode here of our nation's guide a Polish nation guide I hope you've enjoyed it it's been a brief summary my friends of what's available in this nation uh, Genoa is going to be next because that's been requested but if anybody else would like any other nations um, please keep requesting them in the comments my friends if you've enjoyed this episode please keep your comments coming down below please let me know if you've if you've play this campaign uh, how it how it turned out are you are you in the middle of maybe campaigning already for Poland or with Poland please get it down in, in the comments below my friends we can build up a sort of almost a, like a database almost a, a, a sort of an encyclopedia of all these different nations and bringing in your experience bringing in your combat experience your in you know your um, sort of civil experience of how you've managed the infrastructure and all that will be crucial to those who are not only new to Empire Total War but those who are also maybe going to embark on a Polish campaign but I'd like to thank you for all your wonderful support my friends it's been absolutely fantastic as always Please keep your comments coming down below. Whatever you want to say, get them down there, my friends, and it's be gratefully received always. I hope you're having a great weekend thus far. Um, please be safe whatever you're doing. But until next time, my friends, bye for now.